Thank you, Kara. Um, so now we have seen a number of applications, uh, some of them, as you saw, uh, with the child model, some of them with the GHBM. And I will now present one application we did with, uh, with the TAMS model. Um, so it's about pre-crash. Uh, the objective of this, uh, what I'm going to show, there is also a demo, is to show how the Piper tools can be used uh, to position a model in order to account for pre-crash motions. Um, the demo I will show, it will cover uh, actually three aspects mostly uh, of the pre-positioning tool, uh, which is loading an environment, uh, joint positioning, um, and also uh, what I call landmark positioning. So first, let's talk very briefly about uh, the data. The data, they come from uh, a previous project, which uh, is called uh, OMIS. Um, there are be there's been a number of publications. I just quote one of them uh, in Jacobi out there. Um, basically, uh, in this project, they um, recorded uh, the motion of volunteer occupants in a car during pre-crash uh, maneuvers. Uh, as you can see, there is a number of markers which have been positioned on the on the body, uh, and there was a set of cameras also positioned on the on the car to record the, the motion. Um, in this project, they focus mostly uh, on the occupant motion. Sorry, um, so not the driver, but the, the occupant side. There are two maneuvers which we uh, looked at. Actually, they, they tested more uh, maneuvers uh, in, the, in the project, but we just focused on two of them. One of them is the autonomous emergency braking at 50 kilometers per hour, which is basically uh, the driver is going to brake as hard as he can until the, until, uh, the car is going to stop. Uh, then we had the lane change at 50 kilometers per hour. So the car is just going to change the lane, and the velocity will remain the same, so 50 km per hour. Um, for each of these maneuvers, we selected in the database just uh, one uh, volunteer, um, which was close to the 50th percentile, and at the maximum amplitude of motion possible, so that we can really test the tool as good as we, we could. So if we look um, at a crash event, actually there are normally three phases. Uh, the first phase is uh, normally a normal driving, then there is a kind of a crash detection, which can be a, an automatic detection by the car or just a, the driver detecting that there's going to be a crash. Then we have a pre-crash phase where the, um, there will be eventually some maneuvers to try to avoid the collision. And then we have a crash phase. And uh, if we see, so at the end of the pre-crash phase, we have a number of conditions, which are the crash initial conditions. And uh, they include, so, uh, they, in they include uh, body position, uh, body inertia, for example, and uh, belt loading. And the idea is here that we want to just simulate in the FE simulation the, the crash uh, phase. And to do that, we are going to use actually the Piper tools in order to position the models in the position at which it is at the end of the pre-crash. And just use this position as an input for uh, FE simulation. We also uh, add the data from the OMIS project about uh, belt loading. And uh, also, um, we could calculate uh, some kind of initial velocity to the take to into account uh, the inertia. Uh, so what's the process we use for positioning? Actually, we use three uh, different modules. You already saw uh, them. Uh, we use the pre-positioning module, we use the deformation module, and we use the smooshing module. I'm going to show just the part about the pre-positioning module. You already saw something about the deformation and, and smoothing. And now let's go to the type of target which we had to position the model. So there were pretty, there were a couple of uh, very obvious things, like for example, the foot should be, uh, of course, staying on the footrest. That the ends should be positioned close to the tie because we are not in a driving position where the ends are raised, but we are at the on the passenger side looking. Um, there were also uh, markers. So you already saw these markers from the OMIS uh, data. So these are three-dimensional positions, uh, which we are going to try to match uh, with, the, with the model. As you can see, we defined a number of landmarks uh, in blue uh, on the TAMS model. 
uh, these are uh, corresponding to the markers which were defined in the OMIS uh, test. And uh, those markers, we are going to basically pull them to reach a target position which is represented here by the red uh, points. We considered three crash scenario after for the finite element simulation. So first one is a uh, normal driving and then we have a 50 kilometer per hour uh, crash. Then we have a uh, autonomous emergency braking. Basically the car is going to brake from 50 to 25 kilometer per hour and we are going to have the crash at 25. Then we have a lane change. So we go from 50 kilometers per hour, we change the lane and we have a crash. Uh, for the FE simulation, we used uh, an environment which we created uh, in, the, in the project. It contains uh, a folded airbag because we are looking at out of position type of events. Um, the environment has approximately the dimensions of an average uh, sedan car and it has been validated using hybrid three simulations. And we compare the result to US and CAP published uh, crash test results and the behavior, I would say, is pretty much was a representative of an average uh, sedan car. So let's go to the demo. Um, so the first thing um, I'd like to show you um, maybe is the environment. I already preloaded the, the environment. Uh, it's very easy to, to do it. You just go to environment model, you need to add the environment. It's pretty straightforward. I have blanked it right now, but I can show you. So now we have our model, we have our environment, and we already see that there are some things which are not correct. Here is the initial position of the terms model. This is the original uh, position of the terms uh, model. And we see that we have to reposition basically the legs so that the feet will stay on the footrest. And uh, as we are looking at the occupant side, uh, we also need to reposition the head, the ends, sorry, so that they be close to the to the tie. Uh, I have already uh, imported some targets um, which I had prepared from before. I'm going to load those targets right now. And now you see, you already saw, saw this before, there are a number of bones which have been fixed for the simulation as we are looking only at uh, arms and legs for this one. Um, other type of targets that I have defined are joint rotations. So I have already did done this exercise. No, normally it should be kind of a iterative thing that you're gonna change the angle of the different joints and you're gonna stop until you, you reach the, the position you, you are targeting. I have done that, I have already defined all my angles and now I'm gonna run just this positioning. Okay, now I'm happy, my feet are well positioned, my hands are okay. So I can stop the positioning. And um, now what I need to do is to really look at uh, what we were talking about, which is the pre-crash position. So I need to change the position of the trunk so that I can match the, the target uh, position we have talked about before. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to first remove uh, all those targets, which I don't need anymore. Fix bone too. I'm going to also clear these targets here. And I'm going to import new targets, which I also created from before. I have a first set of targets. I'm going to load them. I'm going to clear those ones. And now, I'm going to change um, a parameter. You already saw that you can adjust the stiffness of, of the different constraints in your model. And uh, you might want to have some of your constraints pretty hard, so pretty stiff, and some of them a bit softer. In this case, I have a set of targets which I want to have a bit softer. So I'm going to set this uh, parameter here, and I'm going to import uh, a second set of targets. OK. Now, as you can see, I have uh, fixed the legs. And you can also see that I have defined uh, some landmarks on the model. I'm going to pull on those landmarks and bring the model to the targeted position.
So you see the model moving, it's trying to reach uh, those target markers we talked about. And it's going to reach at some point uh, a stable position. Okay, sounds to be good. I can stop the positioning. So now I have done the pre-positioning. What I could do actually is to go to the deformation module and uh, I would get a bit of a better deformation and then I could smooth this model in order to correct um, the, the problems we have already see with, seen with, uh, with Thomas. Um, so this is it for the, for the demo. Um, now I'm going to show you so the, the results once we have done all the process, including the smoothing. Uh, this is in blue here, the original terms position. In green, you have the normal driving position. In green here is the normal driving position compared to the uh, emergency braking position. So pretty much bend it forward. And here is the result for the lane change. Uh, we are pretty much flex uh, to the side position. And before I go to the results, I want to say that we measured uh, a number of things on the model, a number of uh, injury criteria. So we had the IG, we had the brick, the NIJ, we looked at the thorax deflection, and we looked uh, also at the DC criteria for the, for the thorax. So it was just to get an idea about potential dangerous situation in our simulation. And the good thing is that we obtained some stable simulation running this process. This is here the normal driving position at 50 kilometers per hour. What we see is that basically here the restaurant system are, are pretty well working. So the, the belt is staying uh, right on the shoulder and the uh, head is hitting the airbag pretty much in the middle. So we are in our standard um, restaurant system function. Here, this is an autonomous emergency braking. So we have a crash actually at 25 km per hour after a, a braking. Uh, here, actually, there is a slight um, out of position contact, let's say, between the airbag and the head. So the head is hitting the airbag while it's still deploying, but it's not too bad. Uh, and actually, as we reduced a lot of the velocity, not too much is happening to the, to the human. And here is the lane change. And this is where nothing is working good. So the belt gets slips out of the shoulder. You see the head is hitting the airbag on the side. It's not working too good. And we have a contact to the eye panel in the end of the simulation. So when we looked at injury criteria, this was really the most serious situation, especially for the brain. Uh, where we, when we looked at the brick, if we consider the brick is a good criteria, we had um, a lot of risk of brain injury here. So just to summarize this application, um, I think we showed that it's possible to, to use the Piper tool for studying pre-crash, crash events. Um, the second thing um, is that actually the good thing is that the, the workflow led to stable simulations. And there is still some perspective. We are still working to make the same application with the GHBM model um, and we'll um, finish that, I, I guess, pretty soon now.